are situated along the Shishwap River in a little community called Mara. Yeah, we got started about 29 years ago. It would have been our first season. We started building here in 1992 because it was just a bare cornfield uh, and no buildings or anything on it at all. And now we generally employ 10 to 12 uh, people over the course of the season. But yeah, my dad, when he bought it in 1964, it was really run down at that point. But then being a dairy farmer, my dad had lots of manure, kind of built the soil up and it was really productive soil for sure. We recognized pretty quickly too that growing vegetables is another thing altogether. So one of the things we realized fairly quickly is that we need to try to add more organic matter. We, we thought, well, adding organic matter will get the soil a little bit more workable and less lumpy. For sure, that's something we got into a little bit as well as we thought, okay, well, some of the crops take a while to grow, like corn, for example. I mean, we're usually not finished picking even the first generation of corn until the end of August. And corn is a, a high crop, so it can tolerate having something underneath. Then when we are finished picking our corn, we can just go in and mow the corn and then we've got a green manure coming up underneath without having to do any seeding. So lots of lots of experimentation, right? Experimenting with different kinds of green manures. I mean, the first the first one that was fairly easy would be fall rye. Everyone seems to use it, and it's relatively easily ex available here in the area and not that expensive. So it was sort of a go-to one and then we tried various things, various combinations. So we discovered annual ryegrass as being another great green manure because it gets established really quickly. Yeah. And one of the things that I look for in a green manure too is I want it to get established quickly and I want it to, once it's established, I want it to be kind of outcompete any weeds because that's always the bane. Anyone that's a vegetable farmer will know that weeds are one of the, the most challenging things that we deal with. But green manures do form a big part of what we do to try to uh, keep our soil healthy and in good tilt, yeah. Yeah, so that's sort of what we've been working on. We use compost as well. well we can go and take a look at uh, our compost spreader that we share with, with several other farms in the region. Yeah, just wanted to show you the, the compost that we we buy uh, chicken manure from some of the local chicken farmers here, and uh, that's mostly what we use. Yeah, this is the. It's really nicely composted down, and uh, we use it in our green greenhouses and on the field as well. Yeah, if we're buying some for the field, you know, we'll just we'll get it delivered, and then we'll probably use it the next week. But then for the greenhouse, we're always kind of adding more and more as we start planting into them. So we like to have a pile here. And also in the spring, early spring when we need it, it you can have trouble getting it, uh, partly because of the road limitations. So this way, even when there's still snow on the ground, we can, we can get into our compost and start putting compost in our greenhouses. Why don't we just go over and take a look at the spreader that we use. Yeah, I think there's five of us right now that, that use this. Because it's a machine that you only use like once a year, right? So, <clears throat> but this one, you can spread it on very fine. It kind of looks like a fertilizer spreader because it's got these things here that uh, spread it around. Like they're turning really fast and, and the compost is coming out of here and it just spreads it out in a nice thin, thin layer. So you can get a real nice uh, <clears throat> thin application. This is an interesting spot because this here is fall rye. This would have been planted uh, early September and you can see what's beautiful about this is it just kind of really is a beautiful cover. It's really tight. There's no room for weeds. It'll, it'll have correspondingly a lot of roots underneath it too so it's holding on to your soil giving it structure. So let's just dig up a little bit of a section here to have a look. But uh, yeah you can see all the root hairs going through and it's really holding onto the soil nicely. And you can see there is structure in this soil. There's spaces between all the, the uh, lumps. It's not like packed soil. If you were to take something off the road, for example, that's obviously been super compacted, right? This soil has very little structure in it. It's really compacted. You can see there's just nothing happening here. Now, field soil, even if you didn't seed it, it wouldn't look like that. And then of course in the spring, fall rye will be the first thing to take off, really start growing. Usually we, we, will, we will let it grow to about, you know, above the knee and maybe sometimes it even gets up to here before we end up getting to it. And that's what I like to see is just be able to 
pour organic matter to the soil and it just the soil organisms suddenly have like all this work to do and things to eat and there's this little explosion of soil microbiology that's how i can imagine it anyway uh, where they say yeah hey let's it's a smorgasbord time to go crazy and then they're releasing nutrients and then you put your following crop in into that uh three weeks later and it um it should do well it takes time for all that organic matter that we're putting into it which is a lot to break down to the point where you can actually plant or seed into it and yeah. when you when you do break it down do you mow it and then till it or do you just till it straight in yeah i used to i tried mowing a couple of times and i thought well this is just an extra job because i can take a rotavator and it'll chop it up and till it in at the same time so why not do it in one pass so yeah we just go in with a big rotavator and we don't till it in very deep we just the first pass with the rotavator is only maybe like three inches or something like that just to kind of get the uh, the crop chopped up and in contact with the soil because then the soil organs can start doing their thing. Uh, if it's sitting on top of the soil, it's not going to break down as fast. You got to have it mixed in with the soil, in my opinion, anyway. And then I use uh, other equipment like a cultipacker is usually what I'm using. And it has two sets of packers and two sets of cultivators. It kind of alternately packs the soil down, uh, crushing the lumps, and then loosens it up with the cultivators again, and then another, followed by another set of packers that pack it down again. And a couple of passes with that will usually get us close to where we need to be with getting ready to plant. So it, it's a fair bit of tillage. It's just, you, you know, with this kind of soil, you can't get around having to kind of do some work with it. What I did here is we had peas growing here. We created the rows of peas and at a certain point I underseeded annual ryegrass. The nice thing about annual ryegrass is that when it gets going it just creates this really solid cover of green manures so that no other weeds can get through it. It's, it's really, it just takes over. Let's just dig one up of these and take a look at this as well. This is kind of cool looking. Get a little chunk out of here. So lots of uh, roots. Uh, and very nice soil structure when you look at it this way. It's got, you know, lots of pores in it. It's been growing longer, a little bit longer than, than the uh, fall rye because the fall rye we seeded in uh, early September and this would have been seeded late June, two months earlier, right? You can see how it completely takes over. Like these are, this is all root growth around here. There's nothing that can kind of get past it once it's established. And yeah, so you got huge uh, root mass here that it grows right along the surface and, and then with the greens on it, it just, it really takes over. Here we're, we're back into fall rye again. You can see it's, it's a more of a coarse, coarser leaf than the, the annual rye grass. Yeah, to me, I just love seeing these huge swaths of green at this time of year. You know that all this grass is covering the field, adding organic matter and, and providing opportunities for soil life to, to thrive. Here's another, uh, patch of fall rye that was seeded a little bit later so you can see it's quite a bit smaller. It doesn't get quite as well established although this is still really plenty good for the winter. This is our uh, winter leek patch. What we did here is after our last cultivation of leeks with the where we went through with the tractor and hilled them uh, then we went along and here we put fall rye in and you can see the fall rye is growing all along the edges here and in between the rows so it's like a complete mat of, of fall rye in here and just protecting the soil and reducing seed, weed growth. Like there's very few weeds in here. If you didn't have this, this would all be filled with chickweed or various other weeds. And yet uh, it doesn't get in the way of harvesting. You know, we, we do harvest some of our leeks by hand. So, I mean, the, the way we would do it is go like this and, and uh, doesn't create an issue with, with the harvesting of the leeks. You know, if we harvest it by hand, we're not even, the green manure isn't even gonna be affected. It'll be here all winter, even after we harvest. Anyway, why don't we take a look over here. Here's another example of annual ryegrass. So this is, this is pretty cool. This was a cornfield, like we had some sweet corn here. Yeah, so what I do here is we start off by uh, transplanting our, our sweet corn because it is so tough to germinate sweet corn without it kind of rotting, the seed rotting, especially untreated seeds, right? So we transplant all our corn after the last cultivation. When the corn is about knee high or a little bit above the knee, that's when we go in and throw in mostly annual ryegrass. And then the annual ryegrass 
grows up underneath the corn but only comes up about so high or so and like I said it's the same sort of thing when you're in picking the corn uh, you're working on a nice little lawn it's 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 a nice surface to work on it's cleaner and um, yeah less especially if it's wet it's less greasy and mucky and the, with the annual rye grass it isn't quite the same but I just like it because it germinates very well under uh, you know in the shade and just germinates quickly too so that it can outcompete weeds quite often that's that's what I like to see I like to see no weeds <laughs> so I'm always thrilled when I see a, a green swath like that and think okay there isn't a single weed in there because I just know that annual ryegrass is such that it it just grows so thickly that nothing can grow past it actually why don't we just go over right next to it here is another one that I also seeded annual ryegrass under and this is uh, our winter cabbage crop and you can see that because we didn't harvest the winter cabbage until early October the annual ryegrass didn't have quite so much of a chance to kind of get get going afterwards right so it's not quite as successful here you still have quite a bit in here and I'm, I'm happy with the way it is it's still better than having weeds or whatever see th that's the other thing I'm always concerned about weeds and you'll see that there are very few if any weeds in this in this abandoned or you know leftover cabbage so here's an interesting little experiment that I, I tried uh, this year we planted garlic here so this these are our garlic beds and you can see if you look at that spot over there it's not green at all and here there's a sh tiny sheen of green I just wanted to just see whether this might work. I actually deliberately seeded oats into uh, our garlic beds as we were planting the garlic. And I just want to see if there's any difference between what the soil structure is like in the area over here where I didn't seed oats and it kind of goes through the winter bare. And here where I did seed oats, but as you can see, they didn't get very big. So ideally I would plant my garlic a little bit earlier and I think I'd get a pretty nice green cover of oats if I did it again. But at least you can see it's working, it's germinating, uh, it's looking pretty decent um, and we'll see if it makes any difference at all. I've always thought it would be nice to have it so that the garlic beds don't go through bare soil over the winter. You know, because we don't mulch our garlic. We, you know, so a lot of people do mulch it, so that would, would solve that problem if I mulched it. But the problem with mulch is then you're kind of locking yourself into having to hand weed your garlic because you can't do it with a machine. You can't cultivate it by machine anymore. And whereas our garlic, we do it all by machine. We don't, we don't do any hand weeding. The benefit of that is something I don't want to give up. I don't want to have to go to hand weeding for, I don't know, we have like maybe 12 beds of garlic here, 200 feet long. So that's just not much fun to have to hand weed that. What we did is we took the potato hiller through here. So it kind of looks as though I'm growing potatoes in the middle of November, but I'm not. So the theory behind this, the thinking is one of our challenges is always uh, getting into our soil early. It, you know, our soil is pretty heavy. It tends to be quite heavy soil. In the spring especially, we find it, it, it takes a long time to dry up enough so that we can get early, some of our early vegetables planted. So we, we tried various ways of, of uh, keeping the soil drier. One way was to cover the soil with plastic. We tried that for a few years, it kind of worked. But then I noticed one year that I was tilling in some old crops that had been hilled. And I thought, wow, the soil is a lot drier in the spot where the soil had been hilled versus the spot right next to it where the soil was flat. And I thought, oh, I wonder whether we could deliberately, whether we should deliberately do that, hill the soil, stuff that I'm gonna use early in the season, and then it'll dry up quicker and be able to, we can get our early crops into it. So, uh, we've done it twice now, two years, and it seems to be working. So I'm kind of thrilled about the idea. So this soil here, uh, this whole area, take half the farm and put it into a green manure. Uh, it's peas, oats, and hairy vetch, and it grows quite well. Um, and here you can see this area, because this is where we're going into vegetables next year. This year it was in, in a green manure, and you can see all kinds of remnants of, of the green manure in here. There's lots of little, uh, lots of organic matter here that's still being broken down by the soil, all these pieces here. So that's 
that's really nice to see because that's giving our soil some tilth and and uh, organic matter uh, and makes it makes it just easier to work in the spring as well because I've got all this stuff that I've tilled in like in a normal year there'd be probably about twice as much of this in here the one thing that I still need to try to figure out here is that there's a little too much weed growth in here. I don't like seeing this much chickweed, particularly this spot. Most of the field's not bad, but there's a couple of rows in here where the chickweed is kind of getting established. And that's not a good thing. I don't really want to see that. I really would would be nice to uh, get it so that I could get oats coming up by themselves because I've got peas, oats, and hairy vetch growing here as a green manure. And when I till it in, a lot of the oats has gone to seed already. And if I can get that seed to then germinate and create my cover, that would be really sweet. Y yeah, you don't know whether this is going to make a huge difference in the overall scheme of things. It might not, but it's still, um, I, you know, when I see all of the particles in the soil, like from the previous green manure, that's, you know that's got to be good. There's, there's, there's no downside to that. Uh, we have uh, 12 or 13 of these tunnels, high tunnels. Um, most of them are like this one, 20 feet wide by 100 feet long. We grow a whole range of different crops in there. In the fall right now, we've got spinach and lettuce and radishes and all kinds of different uh, crops like that. And in the spring, we have a whole range of different crops in here because like I said earlier, our soil is kind of wet and hard to get into early. So we tend to grow at least one generation of a lot of different crops in our greenhouses. In this particular one, we've got Claytonia. And Claytonia is a really cool green that at a time of year, like we're talking like we're in the middle of November here, at this time of year, lots of other vegetables, like greens in particular, are kind of shutting down. This green, Claytonia, is thinking, oh yeah, this is just what I need. This is my this is my sweet spot, and it just starts growing. You can see how how growthy it is, and these are really tender, uh, very mild, uh, neutral tasting greens. And yeah, you can eat the whole thing, the stem and the stalk and everything, and the flower as well. And they grow really well from now until well into December, and they can even take a pretty hard frost, like minus five, minus ten is no problem for Claytonia. January, February, it doesn't grow, but then often it'll overwinter and then we'll get a spring crop from it as well. So in our greenhouses, we don't do green manures, but we do apply compost. The soil ends up being quite a bit nicer in our greenhouses. For some reason, it's a combination of being undercover and also getting regular compost. Uh, anyway, we, we have much nicer tilth, as you can see. I mean, I could go through here basically you know, one pass with a rototiller and, oh, look at that wormhole there. You control the moisture in the greenhouses as well? Yeah, it doesn't Less get as wet, pressure probably, pressure yeah. Pressure and pressure so pressure. you can see the soil just breaks up really nicely. That means we can get going because it's drier and uh, very crumbly. We can get, uh, we can till up soil here even in February and start planting some things if we want to. We have occasionally done that. Generally, we'd, we're, we're into it in March. Anyway, well, I can just show you one other little crop over here, which is uh, also a winter hardy green. So this is uh, corn salad. This will start harvesting probably in uh, middle of December. It doesn't grow very large, just these little rosettes. It's even more cold hardy than Claytonia. We've had freezing periods of minus 20, but as soon as it thaws again, it's ready to be harvested. It's amazing stuff. 